Hi, Chow. Listen. What? One Piece SBS material has dropped. SBS 108. And this one is an interesting one. I won't tackle everything. Only a few things that call my interest here and there. But this SBS, not only does Oda bring in a whole new co-system, not only do we have Ivanko material that folks have been dying for, but Mihawk. There is Mihawk and Crocodile, but mainly Mihawk material that must be discussed because we're getting insight into Mihawk's past that I thought for sure we'd get, let's say, at some point in the future with more cross guild focus. So I'm really surprised that you get this material from Oda in SBS. Even though it's minor, it, it still exists. And for sure it does give us a better sense as to what's going on in, in Mihawk's life in the past. So first of all, we have information pertaining to Roger's sword, courtesy of Pupis on Twitter. Oda, I have a request. I'm very moved that in his vivid card, it's written that Roger named the sword Ace. Can I ask you to draw an anthropomorphization, like this name, the anthropomorphization of Roger's sword? And Oda, huh? I received this request many times. You guys are unfair. Now, I don't really have a choice but to draw the anthropomorphization of Ace. Well, I want to draw a very cool one. This is his anthro. Oh, Oda's killing me. He's just, he just can't stop. Basically, he drew a humanized version of Ace. That's what it looks like. He's saying Kamisari, Divine Departure. It looks pretty cool. Kind of gives me like Aladdin genie vibes in a way. Nice mustache, kind of like an ohm look to him in uh, Skypea. That is the humanization version of Ace. Next is Into a Buggy Ship, courtesy of Arter of the Library of O'Hara. The name of the cross guild ship is Big Top Blaster. Is it the best name for buggy ship? No. I'll keep it a stack. Not really, it's, it's kind of mid. Though, when you look at it another way, Big Top Blaster? Emphasis on top? Hmm, pretty devious. <laughs> yeah, pretty devious. If you're a man or woman of culture, this name kind of fire, low key. Big Top Blaster? I mean, is that a play on giant killing, potentially? Even though they themselves are giants, their aim is the, the one piece. Like, that's Buggy's aim. Buggy's aim is now, it's time to claim the ultimate treasure, the one piece. And in the process, we'll aim for some big heads. Oh, we're gonna try and chop off the Monkey Jesus, the Blackbeard, the Shanks. Will he be at Laugh Tail and his ship, the Big Top Blaster, being the one to ferry the future true King of the Pirates? No. This one is, I think, very interesting because People were dying for an explanation to these right here. Kuma's ears. What is up with Kuma's ears? He is Kuma, he is called that. So bear themes, does Kuma actually cut his hair that way? Given what we saw in the Kuma memory Bonnie flashback, we knew that his powers weren't the cause of the ears and now we finally have an answer. Oda reveals that the bear-like things that come out of Kuma's head are actually just his bed hair. I remember so many people had so many different takes and theories and X, Y, and the other on what exactly was going on with Kuma's ears. In reality, as dumb as it seems, as dumb as it is, it was all just simply bed hair. That's just cute. It's cute. That's right. After this, Oda drops a chef bombshell. This is a Gordon Ramsay. This is an Ainsley. This is a Marco Pierre White nuke. Courtesy of the will of Marco. Reader, Odasan, I have a question. Was it Wanze who made the ramen being eaten by Kizaru and the other Marines? From PN Yusan. Oda, what? Nani? Nani? You know how I makes ramen and asked this, didn't you? It's so gross. No, it wasn't him. On that ship, there's an admiral and one of the five elder stars on board. So Marine Headquarters sent one of the four head <laughs> Bro, Oda be recycling these goddamn themes, man. <sighs> Marine Headquarters sent one of the four head chefs named Komakov of the winter cooking, Win the, the winter cooking, dude, this is seasonal stuff, to accompany them. He is the one that made it. The four head chefs is written equivalent to the four emperors lull. And here is the version done by Arter of the Library of O'Hara, where again, Marine Headquarters has an elite group of chefs known as the Yon Cooks. <laughs> 
literally the four head chefs. Among them is Winter Cuisine Komakov, who was selected as the chef for Saturn and Kizaru during their escort to Egghead. Is it just me or does it make the Marines look just a little, just a little bit less credible when they got Yon Cooks running their kitchens? <laughs> This is kind of cool. I, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, right? Number one, Juan Zay was absolute trash. Yes, I would be mortified if I was Kizaru, if I was Jay Garcia Saturn, and I was eating the ramen that came anywhere even close to Juan Zay. One. Two, just like, let's say, Fujitora in Dressrosa, we said Kizaru and now Jay. The Marines are eating well. The Marines are eating damn well, and we kind of knew that based on what we saw in the unironic best filler in One Piece history, the Navarone Naval Base filler after they come out of Skypiea. It's actually a really, really, really damn good filler arc. And one of the cornerstones of that is the Marines and how they only use high quality ingredients for their soldiers. But then comes Sanji, got some goons. Let me show how it's done. That's damn good material. Yeah, it's not canon. I understand that, but it is still outstanding. It, it's the birthplace of Condoriano. Oh, it, it's so damn good. One Piece Faithfuls, I have to tell you a damn thing. <laughs> After that, some more intriguing news here when it pertains to now the Giants. Arta says this on Twitter. Oda confirms it was indeed Hydruden, Garrett, and Goldberg, current new giant warrior pirates who rescued the Library of Ohara, and he shows us the image right here of when Vega Punk visited the area, the giants in that chapter, they were lifting up those books from the water. And you can kind of see here, this does, yes, look like Hydruden. And there's very few One Piece giant girls that we see, for the most part. We do see a Vice Admiral girl in Marine Ford, and there are a few during the Bima flashback, but this being Garrett was a safe bet because again, you had what looks like Hydruden, and this is now confirmed to be Goldberg. They were here actually helping collect the books of the Library of Ohara. So there's a safe bet here you can argue that when we go to Elbaf, they should be there and have some relevance. That's only more characters to give more time to. They should also involve now those Stride Grand Fleet in some capacity. So will they show up in the Elbaf arc for the reason? Only time to tell. We shall see. So Oda reveals the hobbies of the sword members, Drake Reptiles and Astrophysics. So that- Impressive. There's probably a play on the Chicxulub event, the Astro that destroyed all the dying. Yeah. <laughs> After that, we have Kujaku, taming others, making sweets. What's in here? It is what it is, all right? Oda's a grown man. He knows what he wants. It's not a surprise. If you go and reread the full SBSs, they are some hounds, some fiends, Japanese fiends up in there, bro. There's always this one dude named Sanada that's always going on about Nami's Tatas. And man, Oda is, is quick to respond every time, every time, bro. So here we have Kujaku taming others, making sweets. For years now, I've noticed this, where Oda just has these certain proclivities that are definitely not family friendly. Now, after that, Bruce, solo camping and dancing. Sounds kind of like scary being in the woods by yourself. It's almost like you want to be a part of the Blair Witch Project, but you know, whatever, dude, do you? After that, Kobe, sea fishing and training. Cool. Peabody, photography and pouch collecting. Okay, that's cute. And Helmepo, fashion, walking and eating. By the way, shots to Garland, because if he didn't shave, that would be one hell of a fashion statement. The man is his own basketball hoop. And Oda, that gives me moon vibes. Take me there. After this, we go over to Full Alet Island. Oda mentioned how there are no traditional civilians on Hachinoso, but former criminals run the local establishment. Though the island may be lawless, its criminals still follow some rules. So this does harken back to uh, a little bit of mother mode, right? Where even among pirates, there are certain rules, page one, tablao. So it's give me those kind of vibes. And also maybe underground broker stuff too. Underground brokers have been listening to porn for a minute now. So maybe we'll see more of that stuff coming to the fray 
when we let's say focus more on Fullet Island, particularly knowing the fact that Blackbeard, Blackbeard himself, he has, or at least he had slaves at one point in time locked up on Fullet Island. And those underground plays, that house slithering activity, that is Blackbeard's forte for damn sure. That is his playbook 101. After this, <laughs> as you can see here, Oda draws Man, that caught me off guard, bro. <laughs> that is something. Even the hair on the back is all fluffy like Ivankov's. This energy is crazy, bro. Oda draws Dragon Ivankov if he ate Kaido's fruit. Man, that is a lot of zest. That is a lot of spice, bro. Okama away. Never looking stronger. Bro, thank God for Big Mom. Yo, blessed be Big Mom. Mwah. Cause the dragon ability is some hardcore epic ass stuff. At least in Kaido's hand. Momonosuke is kind of dorky with it, but he'll learn, he'll grow. Man, the dragon ability would not have the energy. <laughs> not to say that my on real quick, cause the face is crazy. Ivanko would have it so his face would be the main face still in dragon form. Not the actual dragon face like what Kaido has. Like what? Oh, yo, don't stare too long. Good night. Thank goodness for Big Mom, but make no mistake, if Eva has this power, Eva's in the top 10. Like wherever Dragon would be in your power ranking, Eva's like right in the Dragon, unironically. This may have to be its own video. What's wrong with you? And then finally, clearly, the biggest piece of intel in this SBS, 108, Mihawk, right here. Reader, hello Oda Sensei, in chapter 1058, Progabao mentioned that Mihawk was called the Marine Hunter in the past. Is it somehow related to the reason why Mihawk joined the Seven Worlds of the Sea? I'm so surprised that he actually answered this question. But that ain't the way it's gonna be. Mihawk is a person who holds a grudge against the Marines in the past and have experienced a great betrayal in the sense of solitude. He is just like Crocodile, who doesn't trust people, and there is a part of him getting tired with life. Being a member of the Seven Warlords means he won't be chased by Marines. That way, he will have peace. So that's why he became a member, I think. But now, that position has vanished. So the idea now is to hide behind Buggy's shadow. Part of me can guess <laughs> that the end part, that translation, what the f is this? What? Hide behind Buggy is it? Okay, okay. Well, listen, there is another version. There's another version. Voila! Once again, Ardor of the Bihara, but I will give shout outs to Pew Peace. Thank you very much for this version. And now let's go to Ardor's version where, once again, Mihawk's past tells the tale of a grudge towards Marines and of a man who has suffered great betrayal. In that regard, as Crocodile said, they have something in common, being lonely in the sense of having a distrust for others and being someone who is also already getting tired of life. As a warlord, at least you don't get chased around by Marines. So I like to think he joined for that sense of peace and tranquility. With that being said, now that he's lost that place to be, he's getting around by staying in the shadow of Buggy. So this intel in some sense, you could have already assumed to a degree, however in the past I've argued a lot of those were leaps of faith. But Oda is flat out telling us right here that he has a grudge towards the Marine, and he is a man that's also suffered a great betrayal. The only thing that comes to mind that we're gonna say gauge on a betrayal of would be the Shanks thing, where him and Miok had daily duels. They fought every day for God knows how many years. So that's 360, every day? Jesus. They fought every day, potentially, for maybe multiple years on end. He goes and he's blue, they take a break. Mihawk, okay, he's back, let's pull up again. Nah, actually, I lost my right hand. I'm done sword fighting. What? So it, it could be something like that, or it could be a lot more personal that ties into the Marine side of things. Where the reason why he was known as the Marine Hunter was because of a particular betrayal that he had faced at the hands of a Marine or Marines in general. This could involve his hometown. This could involve a potential significant other. A lot of folks have theorized that Mihawk may have ties to a celestial dragon of some kind. That'd be kind of crazy if he did have the lineage of the quote unquote gods of the world. And his detachment from life 
could be maybe what Zoro was alluding to when he talked to S Hawk about how S Hawk was more human than him, probably referring to Mihawk. Where because Mihawk is so detached from life, maybe it makes him seem a lot more inhuman. And Mihawk has these moments here and there where he is motivated to do something. Like what comes to mind right now is when he lost his position as a warlord and there are all the Marines that are surrounding his island. He was hyped, like, really? Huh? It's been a long time since the Marines hunt me down. Yeah, let's see where this goes. And then the next time we cut to Mihawk, he's like, you know, nah, I'm getting tired of this, bro. I'm, I'm done. That further to have the Marines hunt him down again, like the good old days, that was, no, no, no. That was out the window. And at that point in time, he wanted to be under the shadow of Buggy. Without argue, Buggy in the flesh. Buggy in the flesh. I, I would argue Buggy's words like, no, 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 no. One Piece, shut up, let's go. So who's to say if Crocodile and Mihawk are gonna be able to do what they actually want to do, per se, which is like chill in tranquility. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have dreams, you have goals, shut up, let's go. And Crocodile is thrown in there too, but the only thing that we can tell for Crocodile right now that's like important in his past is the Ivanko stuff. By the same time, considering how he never trusted Robin in the first place, in Alabasta, it was safe to assume they already had these sort of ideas in his mind. The Marine Hunter, you could assume, let's say it could have been part of a betrayal or X, Y, Z, and the other, but now it seems like, yeah, Mihawk at some point past was betrayed and he holds a grudge against the Marine. Zoro was Pirate Hunter Zoro because he needed their bounties to survive. It wasn't like he had a grudge against them, but more so he needed to live, Iki Tai. But Mihawk has a distinct grudge which seems to be very different than Zoro's thing with the pirate hunter moniker that he has. So in the future, we're gonna find out, but this right here, I think is very interesting for damn sure. If there was something else that you wanted me to talk about that you thought was very important, then let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to rate the video, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side. See you, bye-bye.